Call the order at 6.33. And if we could all please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next order of business is public comment. Uh, just a note and a reminder we do offer public comment both in person and online. Uh, we always start with in-person public comment, um, and then once that's completed, we will open it up for comment online. If you are interested in commenting online, just raise your hand and Devin will unmute you. So we will open it up for public comment in person. All right, so we are all set there. I will open up for public comment online. Devin, just let me know. Uh, hi, this is Jay Tulin. Can you guys hear me? Just want to make sure. Okay, that 5142053 is me, just for the record. Jay Tulin, 39 Timberline Drive. I almost said my old address in Berlin. Um, I want to just take a couple of minutes to talk about uh, an event that's coming up that I'm in the process of coordinating that I think is a very important thing. It really has nothing to do with the building committee, but I did check before and had, made it, had spoken with Kat and said that I was going to talk about this very, very briefly. Um, I've been speaking at a number of meetings and will continue to do so. Um, I'm in the process of putting together a team to support an event coming up on October 10th. It's the second annual Anti-Defamation League Walk Against Hate. I think it's a very important thing. I'm hoping the community in Farmington can support this. Uh, it takes place at Watkinson School, which is next to the University of Hartford. Again, it's Sunday, October 10th. It is a fundraising thing. I'm not really thrilled about that, but it is a fundraising thing to support the work of the Anti-Defamation League. Um, I, do, I, I, I am going to be joined by some other members of the Human Relations Commission. This is just me trying to put together some support for something that I think is very important. Um, but I do want to read something. I'm, uh, I also have, you know, like I said, I've been speaking at meetings. I've also communicated this through email to our elected officials and some other folks in the hopes of garnering some support. But I do want to read something very, very quick and then I'm done talking. Now, I'm not sure what people know about the Anti-Defamation League. I think there might be some misconception about the work that they do. The, so I'm going to just read this. The Anti-Defamation Anti League works to protect all marginalized groups from the devastating impacts of extremism, reduce bias individuals through education, and create an environment of laws and norms where all groups are treated fairly and hate has no home. I think that's really important today. So again, um, I'm in the process of creating this team. You know, I'm, 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 I'm speaking at these meetings. I plan to speak before town council and the board of education at their upcoming meetings. It just, just to kind of outline what I'm doing now, um, I have not created the team yet, but if anyone has any interest, um, I, I think Kat may be sending this out to you folks, but um, uh, you know, please be in touch with me and I hope that we can support this and I appreciate the couple of minutes to speak. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Anybody else for public comment online? Anywhere. Any members? Anywhere? Mark. Mark. I don't see a hand. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, next order of business is minutes. So, could I have a motion to approve the attached August 25th, 2021 minutes? Motion. I'll second it. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, next order of business is correspondence received I 24 2021 9 8 2021. And there wasn't any. 
Um, again, I will always provide the reminder that the website still has our contact form available for anybody to use for anything at all. So if you have questions, thoughts, comments, please share them with us there if you're not able to attend um, or if you're joining us afterwards on Facebook. Um, please, if you have questions after the meeting, go right to the website and uh, provide any comments or thoughts in the website contact form. Um, we'll do our best to respond to you in a timely fashion. And then obviously that will be included in the, the minutes of the next meeting. And then we're gonna move right into reports. Um, first uh, report is chair report. I will uh, not give a chair report this evening. We have a lot on the agenda as you can see tonight. We're very busy, so nothing of uh, critical importance from my perspective. So I'll pass it right over to Mark or Chris, owner's rep report. Sure. <clears throat> sure, sorry. So um, just briefly uh, update the group that we had our meeting with the state today with OSPR, uh, our first project prep meeting. Last time we met with them was back in February of 2020. Uh, and so um, it's been a while. Uh, now that we are through referendum, uh, we have a process that we need to follow with the state. Uh, and we have certain uh, meetings and milestones that we have to hit with them. So as we get through the design development, our next meeting would be in October for a schematic design review. Today, we, um, we reviewed a little bit of the enhanced schematic design of them. We got introduced to some of the um, team members from the state that have been assigned now to our project. And uh, we talked a little bit about the grant application, uh, the, the site review, uh, we did some boundary limits, things like that. Uh, quick budget summary and talked about the project schedule. Uh, it was a very productive meeting. Uh, and we'll be looking to get uh, back with them sometime in October. Any questions or anything? No, much more to come on those conversations, but it was good to start those today, definitely. And just kind of get everybody reacquainted with the project. And we had some new team members today that we met. So it was, uh, it was really good today. Um, all right, so we'll go on to report number three, which is architect report. Richard. Thank you, Megan. Um, so I attended the OSDGNR meeting this morning as well, along with two other people from my office. It was a very good, very productive meeting, as Mark said. I specifically wanted to ask the state reviewers how to handle the preparation of plans and specs, because remember, there are two projects here, each of which has its own state project number. We were given those numbers today, so future documents will have those numbers for each of the projects. But I wanted to clear one question that I had, which is, can we have one set of specifications with two project numbers on it, rather than publishing two specifications? It just is simpler, less confusion if the same kind of specifications are issued for both projects simultaneously. The state review has said no problem with that, and they understand that there's greater efficiency in, the, in that process. So that was that was very helpful from my perspective. We have uh, proceeded into design development of the project, which is uh, more details uh, and more uh, coordination with all of our sub disciplines. Um, based upon this committee's direction at its last meeting, we have retained. Uh, food service design consultant, as well as the uh, HAZMAT, the environmental consultant. So they've, they've been released and are currently working with us. Uh, I know that uh, Scott's office has been coordinating the schedule of meetings with um, department heads and faculty and other persons. Um, and those, those We've already had one meeting with PE and athletics. We have more meetings scheduled for uh, next week. And so that's, that's been going pretty well. Um, so uh, we are now waiting for the cost estimate from our cost estimator. There's been a lot of dialogue with them and with our consultants as well. So uh, the project is moving at quite nicely. We have some more conversations we'll get into as we get into kind of some of the new business items. But any questions or anything for Richard on a project status or eight items? No. All right, great. 
Um, so we then will move on to communication subcommittee report. Um, I can give that one yeah. since uh, we just came out of a communication subcommittee meeting. Uh, prior to this meeting uh, this evening, we did um, basically we did a review. Uh, Ira joined us as, as Ira's with us tonight as well, um, and gave us a high level overview of the communications plan that we had talked about previously. So this is that look out. Um, from the, the large components of that communication plan from now until the end of the project. Um, obviously we'll be chunking that out once we have a better understanding of uh, the overall milestones. Once we get the CM on board and we have a good handle on some of those bigger milestones, we can then lay the, the communications plan on top of that. But we had a big conversation about the overall strategy, the approach, what um, tools we're gonna use for communication, much of what we've used pre-referendum, we will pull forward. And continue to use it was very effective um so i was going to help us with that process through newsletters and websites and zoom meetings and all the things that we was, were successful previously so that will be included um a copy of the plan will be in the uh minutes from the communications subcommittee if you want to take a look at that um but again it's it's uh, just a high level overview at this point major components kind of a strategy that we'll be working on uh, within the the communication subcommittee uh, moving forward. And we canceled the uh, meeting next week, or in the uh, 22nd meeting, because we're starting our interview meeting much earlier. So we didn't want to overlap there. So I think that those are really the two big pieces of business. Anything else anybody wanted, wants to offer on communications? No, we got it. All right. <clears throat> So we'll go right into professional partnership subcommittee report. Kat, okay, if you just want to give a high level overview of the timeline, that would yeah. be helpful. Yeah, so the on. professional partnership hasn't uh, met recently. Um, CSG is working on getting a draft RFQ, RFP for um, our commissioning agent. So we will be having a meeting to review that, get out in the field. Um, it'll probably be in the field a similar time that the construction manager was one, so a couple weeks, um, and then we will have that uh, to the committee for review. So uh, that will be the next kind of professional partner that we bring on board. Any questions? Thoughts? Yeah. All right, then we'll move right on to financial report. So in your packet is a financial report. There's actually two different things. One is the typical committee report with committee expenditures that you've seen. There have been no updates since our last meeting. Um, so that's the same. Then there are two more documents that I'm calling invoice tracking. Um, the two separate documents, one is for Farmington High School new construction. One is for central office slash locker room renovation. Um, just so we can track the invoices as they go forward for each project and, and see as we um, have the remaining balance down on our contracts with our professional partners. So um, CSG's invoices and TSKP's invoices. And then once we get a construction manager on board, those will be managed as well um, on this worksheet. Um, so just a way to track, again, these are separate because these are through the authorization that was approved at referendum. Whereas the committee expenditures come from an account that we've had um, since actually the first building committee back in 2016. So all the items that we have in our new business section would hit correct the invoice tracking. Yes. That really is over. Yes. That makes sense to everybody. Mm -hmm. The cat will just add, add services start to come in when. We will add to that. Yep. Just so we can see, we've kept a detailed account of all of our funds um, previously throughout the course of our, our work here. So it's, it's just the same method and, and it'll show um, as they come to the committee for approval what our running totals are. And I'm assuming we have credit points to this now that we have them, or we don't care about those points that we just have for that. Um, I was going to add them. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And I just didn't want to disclose them before it was announced. So they will be added to right, um, this, just so everything, especially for when we get audited, this will be a helpful document to see mm -hmm. uh, everything in one place. Any thoughts or questions on financial report? 
All right. Now we're going to move into old business first. So these are things we have uh, discussed table um, in previous meetings. Um, so what we'll do is do this. Do this as a motion, right? That mm -hmm. first one. So could I have a motion to either, right? So that is how am I doing? Am I doing this? Yeah. Sure. You could say one and then we can amend it. We'll do either okay. at this point. So to either approve or deny the inclusion of theater design consultant in TSKP Studios scope of services. Second. <laughs> okay, any discussion? We'll open this up, I think, for discussion at this point. So if we kind of think back to when we had a discussion around consultants, one of the conversations we have had, and it's kind of in the notes that you see up there, um, we did receive some proposals on theater design that uh, Richard had shared with us some details around those. And I think where we had left it, if you remember previously, was we we're going to look for some additional information around those to help us make that decision. So I think right now is the time for us to have that conversation. Yeah, and I think we can have um, Mark put this together and Richard and Mark can present this. Um, kind of where we are, where we left off, and then it's my understanding that um, the department heads, people involved in the theater, met and reviewed. So I think Scott will have an update. Sure. Yeah. So I, I, you know, with theater design, we um, had two options: uh, we can receive proposals from Next Stage Design and Theater Design Inc. You can see the proposed costs there. Uh, we can see some of the differences in uh, uh, why there was a spread in those numbers. Uh, the tasks. Uh, below, you know, with theater design, it's, it's lighting, raking, draperies. Um, there are some things outside of their scope, like the uh, seating and et cetera, that Richard's team and others uh, put together, but um, they are an instrumental piece of, or can be an instrumental piece in, in creating that theater, overall theater space. So I don't know, Scott, did you and your team have an opportunity to do you? Yes, we did. Um, so I want to thank Richard. He joined us as well. Um, we reviewed the proposals from from both of um, both of the consulting groups, and then um, our team, our leadership team that that deals with um, you know performing arts, visual arts, theater, lighting, audiovisual. Um, that team then went back and conducted some additional research, and then we reconvened. Um, you know, they called. Um, various schools and, you know, reviewed some of the work there and, and they felt like um, while both 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 groups are certainly have done some really impressive work, they felt really comfortable. Um, they also appreciated the opportunity to to offer their feedback, but they felt really comfortable and intrigued by uh, theater design as as a group that, that they were really looking forward to exploring based on both feedback in Connecticut and then some high level projects around the country as well that they've advised on that they felt would be are really good for for the space and and we know we need an upgrade in that space so i know they're they're committed to doing it right so that was their their hope based on it but they were you know pleased with both firms overall but that was their their aim. and so obviously bringing a consultant in even to that was of importance that, that was they were they got really excited they were very happy with the <laughs> you know, i think i think just the serious nature that that the committee has given to, to doing every part of this right was was really appreciated by them um, after many years of performing in a space that, that needs some improvement. So they're excited about the opportunity. So. <laughs> All right, any questions or thoughts? Okay, so the, the motion on the table is whether we bring a consultant on initially. So we have to vote on that before we then vote on which of the two. Mm -hmm. So any conversations or thoughts anybody wants to share on, on the actual procurement of a consultant for the theater design? So uh, I'm, I'm comfortable bringing a consultant on and to find out that, you know, the lower of the two bids, uh, that not just us, but the, the others that have more experience and are comfortable with it, then I'm, I'm good with it. Do you have to me? Take a vote. Okay. okay, so I'm going to, um, so really the motion then is to approve 
the inclusion of the theater design consultant and TSKP studio scope of services. And we have motion to amend. Yes. A motion. Second. Yes. And then vote on your approval. Any discussion on that? Everything okay? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So unanimously approved to amend the motion to approve. Right? Yeah. I got that okay. right. All right. So now the motion is to approve the inclusion of theater design consultant in TSKP Studio Scope of Services. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Unanimously approved. So with that approval, we move on to item two. So this would be a motion to accept the theater design proposal from Theater Design Inc. in the amount of $34,000. Second. Any discussion on that? Any further discussion or thoughts? I mean, just thank you to your group. Yeah, that's for vetting mm -hmm. that and, and doing all the yeah. due diligence on that. Absolutely. And said they were happy to oh, be involved good. and have a chance to do that. Excellent. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, unanimously approved. So now we are able to move forward with your right with. I'll call them tomorrow. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. That's very exciting. Um, so we'll Mark has a presentation for the country. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. All right, so we then are going to go on to new business. So this is um, a conversation. We, we need to take action on the proposal from the Institute for Human Centered Design for Universal Design Consulting Services. So again, this is a motion. Mm -hmm. So we're going to we're presenting this motion. Then we'll once we open up for discussion, I'm going to pass over to Mark. He's going to give us a little bit more detail. And Richard, you can chime in on, yeah. on this particular item. But uh, can I have a motion to take any action on the proposal from the Institute for Human Centered Design for Universal Design Consulting Services? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Whatever this says. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to open that up for discussion. So, Mark, I don't know if you want to start off and Richard, whatever you want to add. Yeah, I'm going to have um, certainly have Richard chime in on uh, the proposal. But, I, you know, I think it's important to know last time we got together, we had one proposal that was from AMA Architects. Um, there was another proposal from uh, IHCD that didn't come in. Um, there was some uh, conflicting information about how it got or arrived or didn't arrive, but it did come to uh, Richard's attention the next day or that night or that whatever so happened. And so um, we thought that uh, the committee should have the opportunity to review that. So KMA has not been awarded. Um, Richard has not uh, uh, put that forward to KMA. Uh, IHC used to uh, propose costs uh, at 11,300. Uh, $36 again. Their original proposal also included the um, standard AIA review, which we, um, and Richard explained last time, that PSKP part of, part of their scope. And so okay, it was taken out of KMAs and also taken out of IACD. So IACDs was about 14 and change at that point. Um, and so again, they both have design review and development. They both provide observations and recommendations relative to practices. Uh, in universal design, um, IHCD did provide us with some examples of what they have done in the past, and so we had some opportunities to review those. Um, they both offer on-site review. I think it's important to note that KMA um, has a sort of a $5,000 allowance built into that 10 4 so you get to sort of spend that as 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 you as you want. So you you, know, you keep them involved, whereas uh, IHCD's proposed costs had that included as a you know as a as a line item, um, whereas KMA's was sort of a blanket statement that said 
after our design review and meetings with you all, you know, we're getting part of our $5,000 of our costs is, is an allowance that you guys can spend down as you need it or want us for on site review. So I think um, from there, I'm going to pass it to Richard. Right. Thanks very much, Mark. So as Mark said, you may recall last time we only had one proposal. And that's what we reported, and that's what the committee acted on. However, immediately after the meeting that evening, I did get an email from Jay saying that he believes that we should have received the other proposal from um, the other firm. And uh, so, in fact, he forwarded to me a copy of an email in which um, people in my office were CC'd in, in the, uh, the transmittal. Uh, I went back to the office and I thought, oh man, this is not good. So, um, because you acted on the only information you had at that time. Uh, and I thought, um, and I checked with my office. I asked Michael Scott, uh, Joy Ortiz, who have been working closely with me on this. And they were CC'd on that email. They didn't receive it either. I didn't receive it. We all checked our spam folders. It just wasn't. So for whatever reason, I could not present it to the committee. But then I thought about what the right thing is to do. I think the right thing to do is to, in light of the fact that we did get it, we really didn't give them a deadline. We did receive it after the committee meeting. The right thing to do is to uh, ask the committee to consider this additional proposal. Um, it's a very good proposal. Uh, they have excellent examples of their work product in, the, in their submission. Um, the cost difference is, I believe, not significant. Um, and however, we have never worked with the uh, Human Centered Design Center. Um, we have worked with JMA. Um, and I would welcome the opportunity to work with either of them. Um, and also, I think it was important to bring this new proposal to the committee in light of the fact that you've had members of the community come forth and i believe there was a letter read to this committee meeting last time from one committee member who spoke highly of this organization so because of that um, i'm asking the committee to reconsider the decision all right opening up for questions thoughts so they're both qualified? Yes. Both have good recommendations, design work, examples, et cetera. Yes. And the first one is they're about the same cost, but the first one has an allowance. So built into it already. So the cost could be significantly less unless we choose to get more review on the first one. That's correct. And if, if everything is apples to apples and, and they end up to be even as minuscule as it may be, and it's a known entity because you've worked with them, I would probably lean towards GMA Architects and stay with our original um, motion. Yeah. I mean, can you highlight any differences between the two? I mean, is there anything you can put your finger on saying, you know, I, I, I HCD does this and GMA won't, or is there anything specific? Um, I think I think KMA can do the work for sure, um, but I believe that uh, the human centered design folks have, have and KMA is an architectural firm by background, and they've fallen into this niche, and they have done this successfully, uh, primarily in Massachusetts. Uh, the human centered design folks seem to be focused on issues of accessibility and universal design and have been real proponents of this subject for a long, long time. Um, and they have a, a number of people who of different disciplines who have been participating in this. Um, universal design is not regulated in Connecticut. With the exception of a planning and zoning, your planning and zoning regulations that were amended to address universal design. This is a, a, a new area that is still being developed. I know John, you spoke quite eloquently previously. Well, if it's really something that's important, why, why is it in the regulation? 
but that's what happens. I mean, regulations are ever evolving, and it's a changing world. So, um, in my opinion, uh, I think that the human-centered design is more of an advocate and more of a proponent of universal design principles. Um, and I would look to their expertise for their advice. And I think you have to rely on us to be the watchdogs of making a fine line between what's a good idea and versus unnecessarily spending money. So I think that we would have to say to whoever we work with, look, that's a fine idea, but we're not gonna be adding a lot of bells and whistles arbitrarily. Um, and so I've never worked with human-centered design, but I welcome the opportunity. I think the only things that I noticed between the two and I think differences, I think one, I think Institute for Human Centered Design is a nonprofit yes. driven organization versus an architectural firm. Um, and I, I don't say that for any other reason other than I observed that that was a difference between the two um, and that they are, you know, as Richard said, you know, advocates for that um, process. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things. You know, the examples they give were very specific. So they showed details of, you know, Things that they actually look at within a set of plans from a different schools. So that was interesting to see. But again, I think, you know, the qualifications are, are there on both sides. You need that. If I can just follow up, if you say they're an KMA is an architectural firm that fell maybe into this niche. Yep. I mean, how long have they been sort of focusing on human centered design in their in their work product? Uh, I, I don't know the age of the firm. My sense is that it's it's relatively young. Yeah. So having worked with KMA before the five thousand dollars allowance that they have, is that typical? Typically, how they work, and is five thousand dollars sufficient for the for the site visits that we would expect to get back? I know that in another project that they've been advising on, they've asked us for more money. I have a question, Richard. So when you found that the principal um, at the Institute for Human Centered Design are or other people involved in the process? Are they of differing abilities themselves? You know, are you getting more firsthand, given that they're an advocacy group, I'm wondering, do you get more firsthand assessment or information or well, is it brought to the table? I think they bring a broader perspective. I think they even have people who have limited physical abilities um, conducting reviews, which once you are in that situation, you, you do have a different sensitivity. So um, I, I think it'd be worth going with this group. Is there any advantage from the design side? Only because I, from my own experience of having designed and built, you know, 88 homes, every single person comes in it with a different background and we have this set of regulations and i know this is cut in stone like it is on our ada side right. but even on the ada side we have to do things out of the box because people are coming from different backgrounds having learned ways from non-ada compliant housing that you do things differently that don't necessarily meet the regulations i'm just wondering from an architectural standpoint having the uh, expertise in this and looking at it from a design side and the and weighing options one from the other. Um, I just look at it from my own nonprofit, the home builders, and they tend to be a little bit um, inefficient because it's more about policy and, and thinking about certain things, not necessarily having the ability to produce those at the designs that make sense or um, how do I put this? nice uh, but they they can be very inefficient they don't even know how to attack things sometimes from a real world standpoint because having the idea and translating that into something that works and not just works but you could do it at the most efficient way possible and i'm just wondering if there'd be a differentiation along those lines between the two um well we're going to be the ones who are going to be saying whether something is practical or not 
so if we get uh, a suggestion from either consultant that we, we just don't think it's practical, I mean, I, I'm not sure what that might be, uh, we'll, we'll be the watchdog for them. You know, I, I know the committee is sensitive to spending money, as it should be, and not spending it um, for things that are just not practical. So I think you'd be relying on us to do that. Because in the end, this is a drop in the bucket. It's yeah. what what gets produced in the end that could be the real cost factor, and that's the real unknown there. So if and if you say that the the allowance becomes almost a, pretty much the bid when it's done, then they're really just equal in the cost standpoint. So it's yeah. whoever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. And yeah. Oh. I just think the only thing I would say about the um, the IHTB group is that I think having an advocacy group would be great for us, but I think that would put more pressure on you to be our watchdog on the ideas. And if you're willing to take that on, if you met with them to talk what their expectation is, because I know that between Ruth Brody and the group and with our Human Relations Commission, She's always had a very balanced approach about what we actually, what's practical and what we can do. And that if you met with this group, that they kind of have that same understanding of that's what we're looking, what we're looking for for them is practical. Because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of wonderful ideas and things, but practicality and cost-wise, whether we can do that, we don't want to box ourselves in a position as a committee that they are really, you know, giving us things that we really practically can't, we're not gonna be able to do. So I think if you are in a position that you can uh, really be the watchdog and not put us as a group in that position that we can't afford to do ideas, but say that what having a group like that, I think would be great for the, the committee. So, so let, me, let me respond to that because uh, I think that is my role. Uh, for example, uh, if a, and I, I work with all kinds of consultants in my career. And if a consultant says to me on this project, which is a public high school funded by public money, says, you know, this, this is the material, this is the non skin material you need to use. Because people who are, um, don't have the balance that a fully aged disabled body person might split on us, and they're pushing a particular product, I would say, time out. This is a public process. You can't so narrow down the bidding that we're going to just limit it to just one product, as an example. So, you know, a consultant might break something like that, but so I would be, I have my eyes and ears open for those kinds of All that for 10% of the contract. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Any other thoughts or questions, comments? All right. So, based on what I'm hearing and from conversation, unless somebody has uh, a different opinion on the conversation you just heard, it sounded to me like that there would be some opening for us to actually go with IHCD based on cost, advocacy, um, you know, obviously with Richard and his team's support on helping us make those decisions, keeping uh, spending in check, making, you know, value cost decisions constantly as is, is our job and CSKP's job and CSG's job, all of us working together that it would be something of benefit. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? Does anybody have any other Thoughts? All right, excellent. All right, so we are going to go ahead. Remember, the motion on the table was to take any action on the proposal from the Institute of Human Center Design for Universal Design and Public Services. Um, so we had the discussion. We are going to, so we need to vote on. I just have, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Have, has anything been said to KMA that they were awarded this for our last meeting? No. Okay. Because that would put us in a little bit. <laughs> <area. laughs> 
Yeah. And that was that was certainly a topic of conversation yeah. and when we were balancing, you know, but it, it, it seemed the right decision to say if we had the information and we had talked about balancing those conversations that we should also present the other option as part of the time. But a very valid point, Johnny, to say how do we handle those partnerships. Add to that, does there need to be a motion to rescind the yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that. Yeah. So Meg, what in the um, agenda there were two options. Yep. Um, you can just amend the motion that we have for that first bullet point, which would be like Mark saying to revoke that initial motion and then to award or to accept the universal design proposal from um, IHC. All right. So um, so I am going to ask for a motion to amend the motion that's on the table, which would be to revoke. The motion from August 25th, 2021, accepting the proposal from KMA and accept the universal design proposal from Human Center Design Consulting Services. What is the dollar amount, right? I should put that in there. Uh, yeah. $11,336. $11,336. $11,336. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. So that is now the amendment that's on the table. Second. Second. Okay, any further discussion on that amended motion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so we uh, are unanimously approved. So we have then just in review, we uh, revoked the motion from August 25th and we are accepting the universal design proposal from Human Center Design Consultant. Richard, do you need anything else from us no, on that? That's, that's very good. good. Thank you. Thank you for the. And sorry about that snafu. Good conversation. And I think that's kind of a, a good precedent for us to set that, you know what, we need, if we've got information, we got to talk about it and do it. So, okay. All right. So we have now a bunch of invoices. That we are going to move on to. So moving on to number two. Uh, so can I have a motion to approve the attached invoice from TSKB Studio in the amount of two hundred ninety-two thousand five hundred dollars? Um, this is for professional services regarding the Flemington High School design rendered through August twenty twenty-one. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Unanimously approved. All right, we will go on to item three. Uh, a motion to approve the attached invoice from TSP Studio in the amount of $12,500. Let's get what that was. And this um, is for okay. professional services regarding central office slash locker room design rendered through August 2021. So this, as you, so now we're starting to see our language is needs to be very clear, and in separating um, the invoicing here. So this is for central office locker room design. So, second discussion. All in favor? All right. Opposed? Unanimously approved. Thank you. Uh, item number four. So a motion to approve the attached invoice from. CSG in the amount of $22,597. Uh, this invoice from this invoice is actually this invoice and the next invoice were actually already approved by the committee, but they were combined as one. This oh, is just bringing them back to separate. the table so that we can have them as two separate for the two different projects. So these are services for July. Yes, these are for July. Okay, so this is the twenty-two thousand we're going to do now, and then the one, then one that will multiple. Yep. Yeah, so the this one that we're on now is July's bill, okay, and for we're going to do August for uh, the new high school, and then item eight five is the July invoice for central office slash locker room. Got it. So moved on number four. <laughs> that is like what happened. Second. <laughs> uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Are right, unanimously approved for item H4. Then we'll go on to item H5. 
five. So a motion to detach invoice from CSG in the amount of one thousand thirty dollars, and this is for central office locker room for July. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimously approved. We will move on to H six. So a motion to approve. The attached invoice from CSG in the amount of $22,597. So, this is for Farms and High School projects rendered through August 2021. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimously approved. Right on to H7, right? Yeah. 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 H7 is a motion to approve the attached invoice from Construction Solutions Group in the amount of $1,030. So this is central office locker room renovation through August 2021. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimously approved. So that is all our invoices. So, next item on the agenda is item eight. eight. Uh, so, can I have a motion um, to move to executive session review and discussion of RFP responses for construction manager services in accordance with Connecticut General, General Statute 206 and 210B? So moved. Second. Uh, and just Okay, in discussion, the attendance in the executive session shall be limited to voting and non voting members of the Farmstead High School Building Committee, representatives from TSKP CBO, representatives from CSG. Approval of the motion shall be by two thirds vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, unanimously approved. We will move to executive session at 7 20. Can we give everybody just want to do restroom um, and then meet right we're not going to a separate room obviously so right back in this room
figure it out. And then come out. Uh, yep. Okay, we are um, coming out of executive session as of week 17. So we are going to put a motion on the table for a uh, vote. So at this point, it is the selection of the final candidates for construction manager interviews. And that includes Damato and Downs, Gilbane, ONG, and Turner. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any additional discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Excellent, unanimously. So the note here, um, obviously, now that we have determined the firms, uh, assigned time to detail for the interview process will be sent to the selected firms. Uh, all interviews will be conducted in public. We will obviously get that um, interview schedule shortly from the back with additional information. We just need to discuss the fact that we're going to provided it is a little bit of a longer day, so please plan accordingly. Um, anything else we need to talk about that's here? That right. will be here. Um, we typically have the firms, we ask that they wait, even though everything is conducted in public session, we ask that the other firms wait outside until they are called in. So we'll just make sure we have a note on the board for that. Any other thoughts? Will, will you be notifying the firms? Yes, I will be notifying the firms and give them the assigned times for their interview. Um, we will be starting, you'll see in the next motion a little bit earlier, and the interviews will be scheduled an hour apart. Um, they're scheduled for about 45 minutes, but with a little bit of run over, so we can stay on schedule. And please do make note we will be assigning our names out to the interview questions. So just be pay attention to what goes out so that we're everybody aware. It's just an opportunity for all of us to get uh, the participation of the meeting very simple. We do it every time, but um, so be aware of that as well. Uh, so one other piece of new business that we need to complete. So can I have a motion to change the September 22nd, 2021 FHF building by the fourth PM? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimously approved. That is our last piece of new business. So, I think we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So, we will adjourn at 8. Thank you, everybody.